Hey everyone, how you doing? It's me. Yes, it's your girl, Nikki. Um, so it is the second episode. My neighborhood kids are excited. They're excited. They're thrilled that I am on Anchor. Here is my second podcast with Stephen Galanis, the CEO of Cameo, where I have had so much fun and success on there. Um, it's an incredible app that you can download and get personalized shout outs from celebrities. I'm on there. There's a bunch of wonderful people out there. So join me for my podcast with Stephen now or anytime. Really, that's the beauty of Anchor. How you doing? So does anybody know how to do this gallery? Because I don't know how to do this gallery. I am so new to this, guys, you guys. I mean, I'm so new to a Zoom. And I am going to bring in my first guest. I'm trying to figure out, he okay, I think I got it. Hello. Hey. How are you? I'm doing well. How you doing? Good, thanks. Okay, we got it. I feel very accomplished. Hey, you know, it's half the battle with Zoom. Like, can we get, you know, we know it's going to be magical content when we're both on, but it's like, can we, can we make it happen? Yes. Well, I'm going to actually take this outside because my dog has been having, like, literally, we had, um, I apologize. We had, we had, uh, <laughs> the, the guys come to clean the, uh, the pipes today, I guess, you know, plumbers and, um, and they came and now my dog is losing her mind. So I can't hear a thing in there. How you doing? I'm doing well. Where do you live? I live on Long Island. Oh, cool. Where are you? Are you, I, is that, I thought that was real for a second and no, I got this very is jealous. Zoom beach, the best beach. Right. I wish I was there. I live in Chicago, but I'm in LA right now. I wish. So, Stephen, how do you pronounce your last name? I've been trying to pronounce it, and people butcher mine. Galanis. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, so you, sir, you created Cameo. I mean. I'm one of the, one of the co-founders, yeah. It's incredible. I mean, I signed on, I signed on with Chad Lindbergh. Chad is my dear friend. That's my homie. And he was like, you need to be on Cameo. And it's been like a year and a half. And I think I've done, I'll tell you exactly how many, because it's just, I have a bunch more to do today. It, I have done 3,256 Cameos. <laughs> that is amazing. I mean, I mean how, and, and, so and, and how, and how cool is it that like, for you know, 30 seconds, a minute, minute and a half, right, of your time, sitting wherever you are, you can just make somebody's day. How cool is that? It's the coolest thing in the world, you know? And I sing in them, I go in and I do my, you can't stop the beat and I go hard. <laughs> I love it. I, I mean, it. where, how did you get this idea? So the, uh, the idea actually came, uh, we had the idea at my grandmother's funeral of all places, which is probably about the weirdest idea, weirdest place you could possibly have an idea. Uh, but I like to think that somebody was, you know, looking down on us from the beginning and, and kind of pointing us in the right direction. Uh, my good friend and now co-founder Martin was an NFL agent and movie, produ and movie producer. And he came with me to this, he came to me to tell me about a problem he was having uh, helping one of his clients who was in the NFL find any like off the field endorsement uh, opportunities. And if you're not like Tom Brady or you're not like the superstar player of the team, yeah. the statistics say that within five years of playing your last game in the NFL, you'll actually go broke. And Martin had this idea where he's like, hey, there's all these people that are really famous and they're kind of more famous than they are rich. And he pulled out yeah. this his phone and he showed me what we today call the first cameo and in the video catch this march this player sends a message to uh this guy named brandon who had just become a father for the first time and in the very first cameo cash is wearing no shirt 
and he's like, hey, Brandon, it's Cassius Marsh from the Seahawks. He's driving tattoos, Southern California. It's Cassius Marsh from the Seahawks. Heard about your son, Brandon, uh, your son, Maverick. If he gets your athletic ability, he'll be playing for the Seahawks one day too. Go Hawks. And Brandon, who was a executive at Nike at the time, uh, you know, he knows LeBron James and Michael Jordan and the biggest stars on earth. But here was a player from his favorite team giving him a shout out and like, you know, wishing his son well on, you know, a, a future football career. And Brandon was like, this is awesome. And he ended up posting it to Instagram and he said, this is the best thing he'd ever gotten. And Martin showed me this video and immediately I had the Eureka moment where it's like, wow, like we should like, we should make that. And the more we started talking about it, we had this larger idea that the selfie is the new autograph. And, and after, you know, any of your shows, people would be outside of the theater door, I'm sure. And, you know, they wanted your autograph. And then after that, eventually it turned into like, they wanted selfies with you. They wanted to put it on Instagram or Twitter. Cause if it's not there, it didn't happen. And yeah. we were really trying to dream out, how do we create the most personalized and authentic fan experience on earth without people having to actually meet each other in real life, right? And, and if you could remove distance as a variable, there's so many more connections that everybody could have. And, uh, and we set out to do that. And, and as we started um, thinking more about the idea, Martin and, and I recruited uh, Devin, who's our other co-founder. And Devin has a really cool story where he was one of the original Vine stars. Him and his best friend, Cody, who's Cody Co on YouTube now, like, you know, 5 million plus YouTube subscribers. The two of them had quit their jobs at uh, Microsoft and, and Apple respectively and got on a plane and started traveling the world in, you know, I think it was like probably 2014. And they started messing around on Vine. They were kind of the original Vine influencers, but ultimately they were never able to monetize that. So Devin and Cody, again, like fit this thesis of they were more famous than they were rich. Like, and because yeah. they were never able to monetize, Devin ended up, you know, going back to software engineering and ultimately was a hired gun that I recruited to come build the website because I couldn't build it myself in the earliest days. And, uh, and you know, had, had he been able to monetize the popularity that he had accrued from, uh, you know, becoming a star on Vine, you know, maybe Cameo never is made because that problem doesn't exist. So we, we really felt that a, there's more famous people today than ever before, right? Uh, Instagram and YouTube and SoundCloud and, and, and the pure amount of fame in the world is increasing. And because of social media, fame is more sticky than ever before. So if you had your 15 minutes of fame, you know, in 1999, like nobody remembers you. But if you have your 15 minutes of fame in 2020, like you might have 10 million followers that never leave forever, right? And and I thought those were both really interesting concepts. And I thought that this was a market that, while well, it didn't exist, it had potential. And, and it was one that was growing at a very rapid rate. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how we got started and, and what, what was behind it. You guys should do a cameo convention. <laughs> like a cameo con. I'm not even kidding. I mean, you know, with between when everything's up and running again. I mean, I opened DragCon. I'll open CameoCon. I'm not even kidding. I'd, I'd love, I'd love you to do it. We've we've been talking about this for a couple of years, and you really? obviously with with yeah with Cameo Cares, you know, the the online con that we did a few like last month. That was our first ever. Like, we don't even really have a podcast, right? So, like for us, we we felt like, hey, we've got these great relationships with talent. They love working with us. Like, we're at the center point of the talent fan experience so like we should do it i totally agree and um and we'll probably like at least in the next year it keep iterating on that cameo cares format and and really try to go digital fan convention first and then if that becomes a hit then it's like hey let's go get everyone to la or get everyone to chicago and uh and do something cool because the the diversity of our platform is really what makes it so special right like you know, somebody comes for you and then they, uh, you know, they find like their dad's favorite football player on there. And they yeah, see you can go like, from like me to Brett Favre to Gilbert Gottfried real quick on there. Totally. And and that's what makes it fun, right? There's something yeah. for everyone. And I always you tell... I a life, Stephen Galanis. And I always tell people that um, everybody has like that person that's special to them uniquely. Again, this was an insight I had watching, you know, Devin, my co-founder, uh, have these like extreme, you know, he has like 20 or 30,000 fans on Instagram, but like 
there are fan accounts for Devin. Like when we yeah. would go to Lollapalooza or Coachella, like people would storm him. Like he doesn't have as many fans as Justin Bieber, but his biggest fans love Devin just as much as Justin Bieber's biggest fans love him. And and we really believe that there's just this intensity. And and Devin has this theory that I, I'm increasingly more like subscribe to more. And it's that in the world of social, the average person, let's just say they have 10 favorite people in the world, their mom, their dad, their your girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. And then like in the age of social, very often, like maybe two or three of those are people they've never met before, right? It's people that are watching them on Instagram story every day, or they're consuming all their TikToks or their Vines or their YouTube videos. And they're, or they're, you know, an author that like you're waiting for their next book all the time. So in a world where like increasingly it's likely that you don't know, you know, one, two, three, four of your favorite people on earth, like Cameo can be that source that connects it and makes it happen. It's very much a bridge, Cameo. Um, it bridges people together. And I have had some incredible requests. I mean, some really, really cool things. You know, people people go out of their way to really try and get that really personalized special gift for a fan or for a family member. And you do get that. What's one of the craziest uh, cameo requests you've ever heard? Craziest in which way I can go? Any you you pick I know. Me which way? I mean, look, I've gotten a million. But, well, but well, you you know, Nikki, that in the next ten days we'll have crossed our millionth cameo. Really? And actually, I got a question for you. So we're yeah. we're debating this, and we want to do something really special for the millionth, the talent that makes the millionth cameo, and the and the fan that purchases the millionth cameo. Uh, and the thing that's cool, it's not by a millionth book, it's a millionth fulfilled, right? So obviously you yeah. have a bunch in the hopper, so it depends on like when you do them. So it's kind of cool that nobody will be able to rig it. But I was, I'm dreaming up like what would be the Willy Wonka, like, you know, golden ticket experience for a cameo? Like what would the 15 out of 10 cameo experience? What is the most absurd thing you could imagine us helping you do with the fan uh, that would make the millionth cameo so special? I would love to, honestly, with a fan, I would, I don't know, I would, t obviously, I'd be down to sing and dance with a fan, but I always feel like, um, my fans, for some reason, always want me to scoop ice cream with them, you know, from when I worked at Cold Stone, and maybe you guys want to get in on this, um, Michael Ray, the brilliant musician, him and I have a charity thing that we're getting going once everything gets up and running again, we decided that we want to go to a Cold Stone in Times Square or maybe on Long Island and probably Times Square though and sing for tips and send all of our money to, I'm going to give mine to No Kid Hungry, he's going to give his to St. Jude um, and that's going to be our tip money and then if Cold Stone, you know, is cool enough and they give, you know, their proceeds, that would be dope too. So who knows, maybe Cameo can come and all the proceeds that people book with my cameos will give you know as well i love that idea so quickly did you what, what's your favorite cold stone creation you know i made a tracy turnblad twist and not a lot of people know um it's not my favorite but it's good it's cotton candy with gummy bears and sprinkles and like whipped cream and pound cake it's literally like a it's a tracy turnblad and an ice cream so my, uh, I'm a chocolate Sweet, devotion. Colorful. I'm a chocolate devotion. I'm like a chocolate holic, and okay. I do like the a choc a chocolate the gotta love it or whatever the big one is. Yep, with I the, know exactly uh, chocolate what chocolate dip waffle cone. And one of the I got to give a shout out to Grubhub. Like ever since Grubhub put Cold Stone on uh, on the platform, like I think I've been going. You know, maybe you go once or twice a year to like now it's like any day that I'm grinding, I feel like I need a treat. Like, hey, grub up Cold Stone in 10 minutes. It's amazing. I was very bad and I went against my Cold Stone family yesterday and I got some fat free sugar free vanilla uh, Carvel. I committed the ultimate crime. How could I? <laughs> I love it. So, I mean, so with the cameos, we were talking about the requests. I mean, yeah. what's one of the most like outlandish things that you've heard? I mean, outlandish. Uh, I still think one of the funniest ones was uh, last year. Um, this guy got, I think his name was, his name was Ethan. And he got, um, 
<laughs> you got Bam Argera and uh, and then the guy from like American Ninja Warrior. I'm, I'm forgetting his yeah. name right now. Uh, to get his boss to basically tell his boss that he quit Apple, and like that was pretty. That was pretty wild. Um, My God, you know, it, it basically, yeah, it basically, like you know, Bam was like, uh, you know. Uh, and Ethan wants to let you know that you quit and everybody else is going to leave because you're a terrible boss. <laughs> and like, it was just, that was one that like just totally cracked me up. Um, probably the most meaningful one that I've ever seen. And, and there's so many of these, but I remember very early in, in uh, cameo history, uh, you know, there was a point where like, like today we do so many that like, we don't see them all but yeah. back in like the summer of 2017 when we were getting going, uh, I remember that there was this guy that wrote into uh, Ben Bruce from the band asking Alexandria, and the request was something to the lines of, "Hey, my uh, my girlfriend's brother just out of a hair, heroin overdose, and her your music is like the number one thing keeping her going. Like we missed, we had to miss your show and whatever market, Cleveland, Ohio, or wherever they were coming through. We we missed your show, but we really." Um, but, you know, just tell her because of the funeral, but just please tell her that, you know, you love her and that, you know, and, you know, here you are as a musician, right? And you can imagine like one of your biggest fans going through such a tough time and, and responding to something like that. And I still get chills today thinking about that one. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's, t it's incredibly tough. You know, I know, I know from playing, like, literally, I think the happiest person alive that, you know, you can bring a lot of joy to people. And with Cameo, it's done literally every day. I mean, I know I, I do, I guess I average about at least 10 to 12 a day. Um, there have been days, I, Chad, I blew Chad's mind when he said to me, he, he, we had, first of all, he had me over for his, at his house for dinner. And Chad Lindbergh, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, the man can make a mean bolognese. Don't let him mm -hmm. fool you. Uh, he had me over for dinner and he goes, so what are you doing now? I said, well, we're going out to do some, I'm going on back to my hotel to do some cameos. He goes, how, what are you doing? Like five? And I was like, 63. <laughs> <laughs> he was like what I was like yup and the cool part is that you get to refer people to yes so I'm sure that Mr. Lindbergh has gotten plenty of his strawberry acais from Starbucks that he loves because of my cameo hey but you know what it, it I made love it. It. he just that, uh, them all. totally and and you know for us that's why we've always had that referral program and and so many of our, you know, most iconic people like yourself on Cameo have come from friends having a great experience on it and saying, and, and frankly, especially when we were a brand new thing and, you know, it, it was such a revolutionary, crazy idea, right? There was like, oh, like, I'm going to like charge my fans, like, that's weird. Or like, you know, what if they say weird shit to me, like any of those stuff. And, and we knew what the magic was. I saw it the first time I saw one. I'm like, I could just have empathy as the fan and say like, I wish that I had something like this. Um, and I remember when I was a kid, like I was a hockey goalie uh, my whole life. And if Eddie Belfour, who is the Blackhawks, Chicago Blackhawks goalie when I was a kid, that was kind of like my hero growing up. Like if Eddie had like wished me happy birthday or like pumped me up before a big game, like that would have made my life as a kid. Um, so for me, that was something that um, we just felt like this had to exist in the world. And, and we're very fortunate that a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, great talent kind of saw this early, saw it, especially because now like Cameo is, you know, bigger and, and, you know, you, when you joined, like, you know, you did well right away, but like, it's grown so much that you're doing increasingly well, like every week, every month. And uh, especially during, during in place, we've seen bookings increase by about a thousand percent. Um, and in a world where, every single athlete, musician, actor, you know, comedian, everybody is stuck with shelter. Well, it's so cool because during the they're sitting at home, the revenue streams have been. With the yeah, quarantine yeah. though, it's the gift that you don't have to, you know, um, you, you can't risk getting sick by sending a cameo. You know, you can make people smile. Totally. I mean, it's, you know, all the, it all points to there. When did you know that cameo, when did you know that it was a success? 
was it a certain person or or something so there's a there's a funny there's a there's a funny story that you know i think you'll really enjoy um so when we had the very first talent on cameo his name is cassius marsh and uh, yeah. we launched the site on march 15 2017 and we basically had the idea from the beginning that like if we could you know we create a website and basically like we give you a link as a talent and all we need you to do is kind of promote and then if you promote this in the earliest days because we're a marketplace business so there's the chicken and the egg we were building a marketplace for fans and talent but we had no fans and we had no talent yet so our idea was if we gave the if we picked the talent and we gave that talent an asset to kind of promote then they could you know start bringing their fans in and, and get all that going and i'll never forget uh it was march 15 2017 uh we're launching i was we had uh, one talent on the platform, Cassius Marsh. And if you go to Cameo today, there's videos and talent and reaction and all this stuff. Imagine like nothing. It was like a Google form. And, uh, and basically, we decided that Cassius was going to send a tweet out. And we're expecting, you know, hundreds or thousands of people to come to the site. And I happened to be in Scottsdale, Arizona, working on getting the second talent on Cameo. And, and Martin and Devin and Cassius were in Devin's apartment in Venice Beach. And Cassius sent this tweet and he had the, that original video that I told you about that gave us the idea. And he basically said, Hey, Seahawks fans for 20 bucks, I'll make something like this for you. Go to this website. Yeah. And he sends the tweet and we've got Google analytics going and there's one dot in Scottsdale. There's one dot in Venice and he hits tweet and crickets. Nobody showed up to the site. And not only did nobody show up, but fans started talking shit to him on Twitter and saying, Cassius, you're in the NFL. Like, how much is this company paying you? You know, he had just given us $25,000 to help start the company. So now he's an investor and he's feeling shitty and other fans are piling on and he walks away and we're just like, oh man, like, like, holy shit. Like maybe nobody wants this. Maybe our idea was just totally off. And I remember at one point thinking like, well, maybe Google's off and maybe, maybe there's actually people and it's broken. So I remember I, I signed off cameo.com on, on my phone and the dot in Scottsdale disappeared. And then when I, when I hit cameo dot came back, it's like, no, it's not that Google's not working. Like nobody wants cameo. Like this is bad. So cash storms out. Martin is his agent and this is his only client. So Martin's chasing after Cash is just to like hope he doesn't fire him and like lose yeah. the friendship or anything. And, and 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 then all of a sudden this dad pops up, this dot pops up in Renton, Washington. So now we have our first like organic person on the site. We're like, wow, like what's gonna happen? I remember I was at like the edge of, you know, I'm on my elbows at the edge of the table, like watching my phone, like what are they gonna do? What are they gonna yeah. do? And now you can watch videos, you can like do all this stuff. There was nothing to do except like what's the name and like what's the email and like buy like that's it so like five minutes go by or it felt like five hours and we're like are they gonna buy are they gonna buy and all of a sudden the dot goes away and we were like so dejected and we're like oh my god nobody wants this and i had left my job at linkedin to go start this and you know me and martin and, and devin had put our time and our money into getting this thing up and going and here we got like the biggest slap in the face from you know from the market ultimately saying is this something that we want or not and uh and then all of a sudden my phone started vibrating and i get a dm from this person in 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 uh washington and he goes cassius marsh is my daughter's favorite player in the world it's her 16th birthday on thursday like your payment processor is not working but i'm like hey just send me the message this on the house like we'll get it done of course, Cash was mad at us, so a week went by. He didn't do it. When he did it, he was like sourpuss, and he just wasn't feeling it at all. But I sent the video, and the dad ended up like sending me uh, the reaction. And you know, we didn't know these reaction videos were a thing. But when I saw this little girl crying because she was so happy, and she goes, "Dad, how did you do this?" And he goes, "Dad, he's awesome. That's how." Immediately, I'm like, "If we can do that one time, we could do that thousands of times." Yep. We can do exactly. it millions of times. Hopefully we can do it billions of times. You guys do it millions and, of times. And you know I mean I know Yeah, and the Nikki the Nikki, the other thing too there is yeah. like once we had the first reaction video, right, the value prop was totally different. It wasn't like 
do you want to charge your fans for money? It was like, do you want to make your biggest fans do this? Right. And then that was a whole new, that was totally new. In the beginning, I started getting a lot of DMs from people and people still DM me and Hey, it's my friend's birthday. Can you send me a video? First of all, I love my fans more than anything in the world, but we are all business people and we are all trying to make a living. And if I do, and this is what I tell them, if I do a video for you, it is not fair to the 3000 other people that have paid for cameos. Totally. So I tell them, tell me what you want me to say. If there's a special song, whatever it is, I'll I'll do it. It's $30. You know, I like to keep it low so that, you know, everybody can, because I know a lot of my fans are in that younger age bracket. I'm a millennial. I know the struggle. Yeah. So, you know, I try and keep it like that. But I think, I think that's, and people ask me, how have you been so successful on Cameo? And I'm like, because I'm just me, but also because I do what the people ask, but I try and go a little bit above and beyond. That's so critical. People always ask me what makes, you know, what makes somebody a cameo star, right? And, and you know, if there's a, uh, if there's like a, a hall of fame of cameo people, like you are in the hall of fame of cameo people, which is, exci- you know, which is super that's exciting, right? Crazy. Because- Are you kidding? That's an honor. And, and Nikki, one thing that I, I tell, I love telling investors or prospective talent about is like, Cameo is a new medium. It is different than Instagram. It is different from YouTube. It is different from Twitter. So on Twitter, like Ashton Kutcher and Shaq were like two of the original people to kind of be like the stars. And then when you would think of Snapchat, right? Like, like DJ Khaled was like the biggest person in the world there. Yeah. And then when you think of Instagram, it's like Kylie Jenner, the, the Kardashians and the Jenners and Bieber. So like every platform makes its own stars. And I believe that Cameo the skill set to make great cameos has to do with authenticity. It has to do with personalization and it has to do with like just being like going above and beyond and creating the best possible videos. Uh, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, you mentioned Brett Favre before, like the reason people love Brett, it, like there's a lot of other quarterbacks and hall of famers on cameo, but the reason he does so well is because, you know, he's like authentic and you never know what you're going to get out of Brad. And he was so famous for improvising and like, I was, and he I was, still I'm does that in his cameos. Kidding. I'm not even kidding. I was thinking, and I was laying in bed today and you know, I've done, I've done a lot of cameos to like promo other people's work and stuff like that. Like, Oh, go check out this one's podcast or whatever. I was like, I should get Brett Favre to do a cameo about Mickey Knight. <laughs> I love him. For sure. And you know, one thing we've, one thing we're talking about internally is, uh, is actually like creating more talented talent collaboration. So, you know, if you are like verified cameo talent, like being able to book cameos from other talent on, on the platform, you know, to, to use to, to collaborate together or just to like have fun with each other. That's something we're thinking about. Have you guys ever thought about, um, I know that I, cause I sing in every cameo. I love them. I love to sing in them. But have you guys, I, you know, there are certain people that for like, I think it'd be awesome if I could do like a duet kind of cameo. That's exactly like what we're talking about, right? Or, see, so, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, that, that's exactly what we're talking about. So, you know, the ability for someone, for example, to book two, like two talent at once, you guys could do a duet or, you know, it's um, let's say like someone loves the real housewives and, and, you know, yeah. you get like, you know, you get Luann and, Sonia, you know, and, and like they're together. So totally that's something we're thinking about. That's so cool. I love that. I mean, you guys are just so creative over there. And honestly, one of my favorite things was on Halloween. Oh my gosh. So who dressed up as me? But honestly, I've seen a lot of Tracy Turnblad costumes, but so, this was a Nikki Blonsky costume. Yes. So Daniel, yes. Oh. Daniel, uh, so <laughs> David Salad on our team, uh, is like you're one of your biggest fans in the world, oh, and he is, he just loves 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 uh, you, and uh, that year so this was Halloween 2017 I believe or I guess it, it might have been Halloween sorry Halloween 2018 uh, we decided to everybody had to dress up as a cameo talent and David dressed up as you and it was just such a hit. And uh, it was funny because I, I just did a company all hands right before this. And I told him that I was, you know, com- I told the whole company that I was coming on podcast. And I'm like, the only rule is that David's not allowed to, to be on it. Oh, David. 
David, love you. Are you kidding? I'm going to make a cameo for David. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should make a cameo for David. He'd love it. I mean, you guys just seem like you have a lot of fun there. You also sent me, like, the most bomb Nike dunks I've ever seen in my life. Nike Air Force One. Awesome. Oh, they're so, so awesome. Yeah, and, and, well, two things. Number one, uh, we make it fun as a value at Cameo, as is yeah. Roll Out the Red Carpet. So, you know, we when we think of Roll Out the Red Carpet, it's like every single fan, every single talent that we work with, every single employee, Every anybody like trying to come in our orbit, you know, we want to treat them like they're VIP and the most important people in the world. And, and, um, you know, for us, like those shoes were just a, a small, uh, thank you for, you know, how many people, you know, you've helped us, uh, put smiles on their faces. And we always talk about, we never talk about like cameos. We talk about creating magical moments and, and, uh, you know, we just love the magic that we've been able to create together. Well, thank you. I mean, it was, they were so, they're lovely and they're so comfy and I, but there is something, a magic that is created in a cameo. I mean, I was walking down um, the street in Austin, Texas. It's nighttime. I was with a friend and I hear, oh my God, it's you. And I'm like, yes. And they're like, I just got a cameo. And they they were like flipping out and they were like, you sang, I can hear the bells during a cameo while I walked down the aisle. <laughs> what? I mean, amazing. Amazing. I Yesterday, yeah. I congratulate well, and, and how First off, thank you. How cool is that? That the greatest moment of the best day of their life, you got to be a part of. I mean, it's an honor. It really is. You know, I, it, I, you could only hope. I mean, I sometimes think like if I had to have a cameo of somebody at my wedding, I don't know who it would be, honestly. That's kind of fun. Like who, who's somebody that uh, we need to get on cameo that isn't on yet? Like who, who would like you just die if we got on? Oh, well, I think I, I, you need to get John on. Because, I mean, he, and he is just so good with his fans. I've seen it firsthand. And if you do, you know the referral code. I got uh, you. But, you know, he's just so great. So I would say him, um, you know, Lainey Kazan is a dear friend of mine. Uh, she's going to be my 100th episode on here. So, you know, I think there's just so much brilliant talent out there right now. And like you were saying, there is somebody for everybody on Cameo. But there's new people getting famous every day. And I just did an interview with the magazine and I said, they said, what's something that you would like to tell, you know, young actresses? And I said that the fame can be gone like that. You have to keep working for it and stuff like that. And then Cameo came up and I was talking about it. So know i think there's something for everyone and i think cameo is also a great way to keep yourself you know as as a performer on the up and up it really is like the cutting edge of apps and you know i i had a great uh conversation with one of my favorite comedians norm mcdonald and i asked norm i'm like norm why do you like cameo so much and he told me he's like cameo helps me like my fans and i they're like creating new content. We're co-producing new jokes, right? And that to me was like the ultimate, right? When you, when you think again of our mission to create the most personalized and authentic fan experiences on earth, to be able as a fan to like create content with your favorite people, like that, that's, I think that's the, yeah, that's the ultimate. It's exciting. I was sitting here last night and I was thinking about, you know, you having you on today. And I was like, I was doing my cameos and I said, cameos are really a performance they are and that's why performers do so well on there you know absolutely it really is yeah that's honestly that's such a great point i could have said it better the other thing too i think the value prop of um you know on cameo like you're essentially getting paid to become more famous or like yeah you turn your biggest super fan into like a bigger super fan right so yeah, that person different. Yeah, that, but I'm saying, like, how cool is that, that, you know, if somebody gets a cameo and they share it, even if some people will know you and be like, wow, that's amazing, other people will be like, 
oh, who is that? And I'll tell you a story. Uh, for Mother's Day, my mom was, you know, of course, like I always have to get her a cameo and she's, her friends are always asking like, who am I gonna get her for whatever yeah. this Mother's Day? And I always try to find someone that she wouldn't know that I, I just see like doing exceptional things. And on LinkedIn of all places, I saw somebody share a cameo from Michael Franti. And I, I did not know who Michael was. And he did this like three minute like song and, you know, not dissimilar to a lot of the cameos I've seen you do, but it just blew me away. And now all my mom's friends are like, they're, 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 they're Mike Franti fans because they saw this cameo and now they learned about him and they like his voice. And now they're like downloading his music. It's crazy. I think I saw that one when he just pulled up the guitar. Yeah, exactly. With his wife. Yes, exactly. I mean, it was like, crying, laughing, and, and my mom, my mom literally like cried and, you know, she's probably seen thousands of cameos. Like, I'm sure. And she's got to be just, incredibly proud. Oh yeah, my she, gosh. Yeah, she's proud. She's, Were you she's into sorry. tech growing up? Was that a passion? What was your passion growing up? Uh, sports. I, I was always, uh, yeah, played a lot of sports growing up, but, um, you know, my uncle is actually uh, a movie producer in Hollywood. So, like, sports and entertainment are things that I've, like, generally always been interested in. Nice. Uh, for entertainment, like, I love movies. I'm actually not um, – I'm not, like, a huge music person. Like, I, I enjoy music, but I, I'm the type of music listener that's always, like, I listen to Top 40 because that means other people have vetted and done the hard work and, like, this is probably good. Um, yeah, I so, just listen to Spotify playlists because I'm like, okay, <laughs> you weeded out the decent songs. All right. Yeah. So for me, um, yeah, but I've always been like, my, my nickname as a kid was the mayor. And I've always just been someone that brings people together and connects them. So in many ways, like I think none of my, if you were to go talk to my kindergarten teacher, she probably wouldn't be surprised that this is the company I ended up starting. Do you remember who your kindergarten teacher was? Uh... Yeah, Miss Pollen. Yeah, I had oh, Miss Pollen. Pollen. Yeah. I had Mrs. Mason, and she was the best <laughs> ever. I mean, you know, and I, but I also, I had an incredible mentor, Dr. Pamela Levy, who I credit for everything. Did you have a mentor like that in school, or somebody that you know you knew you could go to? Yeah, in school, um, I had this uh, teacher named Miss Mrs. Roshman that really turned me on to reading and up to that point in my life like I was always smart but I didn't care about school um, but she like got me hooked on reading and then I turned into a voracious reader and you know ended up like captaining multiple sports in, in high school but I was also like a you know a pretty you know decorated debater and you know just did a lot of stuff so like intellectually she got the fires going um, and then you know as an entrepreneur I've been very blessed to have some like unbelievable mentors. And that's one thing that's so cool about tech. I was in finance uh, earlier in my career and in finance, like nobody ever really wants to like help people out because it's so like dog eat dog. Yeah. And the feeling is always like, well, if you think this is fun, you should have seen what it was like in, you know, the, in the eighties or the nineties or like, you know, yeah. Oh one, like all, it was always about what had happened. And then tech, when I went to go work at LinkedIn, it was all about like, what is, you know, what will be, and, and, um, and I've tried to really bring that growth mindset that I learned at LinkedIn to uh, Cameo and challenge our, our employees to, you know, become the best versions of themselves every day and, and to figure out what's their ultimate dream path and, and make sure they're developing the skills to get there. I mean, I can tell you, you know, and I have to just give a shout out to Annie, Wood, Annie Woodard. Yeah, I mean, Annie's the best. She is. Annie you are my girl. I mean, this girl single-handedly like has handled more. She has put out more fire for me. I mean, she's incredible. She's the best. And, you know, she's honestly, I consider her one of my friends, one of my dear friends, because I talk to Annie through text message, like at least three times a week. She's great. And can I tell you, I wasn't feeling well this summer and I had to take a little break off a of cameo. And Annie sent me flowers from you guys. And I was crying. I mean, you guys are just, you're a wonderful company to work for. But honestly, you just promote all good things. I, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, again, I think it's a testament to the incredible humans that we've been able to bring in the building. 
Um, I, you know, yeah, like, well, I, I was one of the founders, you know, at this point, you know, it's about building a culture and making sure that the key values are being followed. And, um, and, and ultimately, that's, you know, as a CEO, that's probably the thing that, you know, stories like what you just said, or what most excites me about running a company like Cameo is like the, you know, amazing work that is getting done every day at that, you know, doesn't even get to my attention. So when it brings it, it's like, wow, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. The, and the growth too. I mean, if you had to get a cameo from one person, one cameo, just one, who would it be? But right now or ever? For you. Just, if, I mean, if, if I could hear from anybody in the world this second, who would I hear from? Yeah. Of, uh, I think, I think what I would do. So my Arthur, I don't know if you ever met Arthur or COO, but he's, uh, you know, Arthur is like just a, I haven't one of the, like, he, he's just a diehard, like, um, like loves politics more than anything. And yeah. Arthur is one of my best friends. He's my little brother in my fraternity. And if I could get, if I could get Trump to tell Arthur you're fired just to fuck with him, like that would probably be the funniest thing I could oh imagine. My God. Oh my God. I mean, I mean, it's just, I mean, like a pr apprentice style, you're fired, but like from the resolute desk, like that to me would be the ultimate. I mean, there's just so many ways we can go with cameos. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the fun part about it. I mean, I've gotten some, some of them I've had, I've only, I think, denied like three, but they were like really rough. I was like, a what? Like, you know, like I said to somebody one time when they slid into my DMs, this guy, and he said something awful. And he was like, well, you're my favorite actress. I'd like to, well, yeah, guess yeah. what? How'd you think it was going to work out, buddy? Yeah. Well, and, and I think too, and, I, and, and that's why the paywall is so important, right? Because a lot of people earlier asked us, you know, are you worried about, um, you know, men, like men sending like sexual requests to women or like hate or anything like that. But I think you could do that for free on Instagram. You could do that yeah. for free on Twitter. So like, why would you pay to do it when they're not going to do it anyways? Like to me, that was, that was always like, so I think the paywall also really, is a, is a safety measure in many ways. Yeah, but you know, one for every, let's like, look, it's a say, like it's a saying, right? There's one in every family. You're gonna yeah. get one yes. bad apple. But for all, the, for all the fun ones that I do and all the incredible moments that I've been a part of for people's lives, especially right now with people graduating, and that's what I find. People can't reach out and and celebrate with their family and they can't walk across the stage with their classmates. And, you know, I find myself just trying to give motivational pep talks, you know, and just tell kids how incredibly proud I am of them, you know, that they did the damn thing and they should be proud of themselves. And, you know, uh, it's, it's gotta be incredibly tough to graduate right now during the quarantine of 2020. Oh, I mean, you know, think, imagine if you're a senior in high school or college and, yeah. and actually for my, uh, my old high school, Glenbrook South, shout out the Titans in, in Glenview, Illinois. Yeah. Um, somebody got in contact with me, one of the moms to donate, you know, a cameo a week to the seniors to just kind of keep it going. And, you know, Brian Baumgartner just did like an epic one to kick it off and, and, and it, he mentioned that he had actually been to our high school because we were very famous for the Glenbrooks. It's a speech and debate tournament. It's the biggest one in the country. And, right. uh, and like just the kids went nuts. And I, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing one uh, this week to surprise them on Friday. Uh, a little mock commencement speech. So if you need anybody. If you need one, you let me know. I'd be happy. I, you know. I just, I love kids. And I look at this time because when I got hairspray, I was 17 and I was a senior in high school. And this was the time. It was literally June 6th. Was it June? Yeah. June 6th was the day. So, you know, it's very much that time coming up and I know how excited I was to get it, but I had school and I had prom, yep. and I, you know, so. Um, yeah, no, pr I mean, no prom. Like it's just, or, uh, I know. You know, even for college, it was my 10th year, uh, it was supposed to be my 10 year reunion and that got canceled and now it got pushed to the fall and who knows if it's even going to be able to happen. 
I know. And, and to, or, I you know, as an athlete, I feel for those, you know, in March Madness. Yeah. You know, imagine the college basketball players in March Madness that they've been waiting their whole life for this and then the season just ends abruptly. Uh, you know, they had to do it, but it's just, it's really sad. For sure. But, you know, I think as long as, like what I've been telling people, the more we stay in now, the quicker it'll all end and we can come out and, you know, taste the rainbow, you know, and just, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I feel that if we run out right now, then the world's just going to relapse again and we're going to be in the same exact spot. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely scary. It's very scary. Being in New York during in the, like, I want to say the epicenter of one of the hardest places to be. I've definitely seen and heard a lot of things. So I'm just encouraging everyone to stay in, get a cameo, watch a podcast, you know, listen to it, whatever, you know, there's so many things people are, what's something that you've been doing to keep yourself busy? What's something that I've been doing to keep myself busy? I mean, other than I, just being the CEO of one of the I, I've been, honestly, I've been, I've been working a lot and, uh, yep. I've always worked a lot, but I think like at this point, this is such a special opportunity for us. It's just like, what is everything I can do to move the business forward? Yep. Um, I've been spending a lot of time uh, talking to other founders and CEOs just to get a better sense of how they're looking at the economic environment. Like, are they going to be laying people off? Like, do they feel like they're going to get through it? And just a lot of like mentoring, uh, you know, to me and me like talking to other founders that just share advice but the thing that has been occupying my Sunday nights for the last five weekends was the Michael Jordan documentary uh The Last Dance I don't know if you watched it but as a as someone growing up in the 90s in Chicago that loves sports I mean you know you talk about uh for me if I got a cameo from Michael Jordan that would be the best one you know I, I would buy Trump for Arthur but if I needed to hear from someone it'd be from MJ for sure I would take MJ over Trump, but I mean, come on. I mean, I, but I just love him. I mean, MJ, I mean, now MJ, that has to be, he has to be like the godfather of Chicago. I mean, you know, I saw, um, I saw Reggie Miller uh, in one of these post interviews. He was talking about the first time he played MJ. He like talked shit to him and, and somebody on his team said like, that's, or, or Michael, like just put it in his face and, end up scoring like 40 on him and then just say like don't ever talk to black jesus like that again so for the rest of his career he called mj black jesus black and uh, i saw the lebron call him black jesus today too so i yeah i mean he was a god he was literally oh, a god in chicago i grew up in the era of see i have being a new yorker i am that like jets giants mets yankees but I am a diehard Rangers fan. I will not do the Islanders. I'm sorry, boys. It's not going to happen. I was like a big Mike Bookaboo, Mark Messier fan. Um, Brian. No, Messi Messier's on cameo. No way. No. Oh, yeah. Get my I actually, for Father's Day. Oh, my God. He did. I just saw he did one for some guy's 70th birthday. The Suns booked it because they couldn't see their dad because of social distancing. But he does awesome cameos. Uh, I love him. I mean, and uh, so now I know what I'm going to get my father for, you know, but so I know that feeling. He was very much the, like, him and, like, Adam Graves were, like, the mayors of New York, you for know? Sure. And I'm a, you know, I'm a hockey it? guy, too. I played through college, so uh, those teams, especially, like, 93 when they won it, uh, mm -hmm. that was special. Mike Richter is a goalie, being the Team USA goalie, uh, his helmet, so iconic. Do you know, I, uh, there was, we went one year, I'm forgetting this player's name, but he's like, I think one of the tallest guys in the NFL. His stick is like, his name is Steve something. It's his stick is, my brother won it at a game and literally the stick has got to be over six feet tall. Like it's wow. so huge. That's awesome. I mean, it's so cool. I love a Rangers game. I do a lot of charity with um, the Garden of Dreams, which is their charity. Uh, we take like sick and underprivileged kids to like, Radio City Rockettes and Knicks games and and it's really really cool. So I love that. Is charity is cameo affiliated with some charities? Yeah, we have. Um, well, number one, we we've never wanted to force charity down anybody's throat, but yep. we have, you know, partnered with uh, a bunch. You know, uh, just just last month we ended up raising seven hundred twenty-five k as part of Cameo Cares for 
uh, four charities. Um, you know, No Kid Hungry was one. Uh, the National Restaurant Workers Relief Foundation, Music yeah. Cares, and the Actors Fund. So we we always try to find you know things that are strategic. Um, you know, right before that, if you were when the Australian wildfires were happening, a lot of our talent were were helping us raise money uh, you know, to help uh, you know with the with that. Um, one of the first viral moments we happened actually was we had it. It was in 2017 when Hurricane Harvey was hitting Houston bad. And we got a lot of our talent. This was early days cameo to like, you know, put again, promote cameo for the first time and put all the proceeds there. So cameo and charity are, have always been linked. Um, we have always enabled talent to kind of uh, have the charitable contributions go to the cause of their choice. And then every once in a while, like with the Trevor project or things like that, um, we, you know, we find opportunities that make sense for a larger broad swath of our talent to, to contribute to together. But we've always believed that we should never force charity on anybody, but it should be an option. Yes, I agree. I agree. You know, I think it's important to have a cause and have a reason to, you know, I think we all need a reason to get up in the morning. And if we maybe can't say, okay, well, it's just a good idea to get up out of bed today and do everything I need to do, then maybe say, okay, well, if I can't do it for myself, Maybe let me get up and go to work so that I could give twenty dollars to the ASPCA. You know what I mean? Totally. And I'm I'm a, personally I'm on the board of Habitat for Humanity in Chicago. And you know, last year we took our team out to go and you know help build a house, which was really cool. And uh, I've always been around it. I love it. I have too. And you know, I just I learned quickly with the magnitude of hairspray and you as you have seen with cameo when you have the. Uh, availability to reach a lot of people um i think it can be a magical thing absolutely i mean where would you like to see cameo in five years everywhere um yeah. i think we believe that there's two and a half million people on earth today that and that number will go to five million that could be you know talent on cameo like yourself so think of bollywood or k-pop like all around the world there's just so many talent and if we could be that connective tissue that would be amazing um you know but more than more important than that i think if five years from now we're continuing to put smiles on people's face every day but just way more i, I kind of think of you know especially now that we're about to cross this million magical moment milestone Congratulations! Uh, it, it brings me back to like a kid when you'd go to mcdonald's and you'd see like millions served million you know this many and then yeah. then at one point they were just like billions and billions served and i think like for cameo it's about how do we a lot of times uh big becomes the enemy of cool right if something gets so big then it's like not innovative so like what can we do to stay innovative and cutting edge and like continue to surprise and delight uh our our fans and build the most magical um you know fan experiences on earth that's what we want to do. And um, I think there's so many ways that we can take this, but if we continue doing the core very well, um, we're going to, there's a lot of room to run and there's a lot of really, um, you know, category defining extensions that I think could, could come off of the core product. I love that. Well, I think honestly, I mean, it, it did so well, so fast. It grew so quickly. And I think it's only gonna, I know it's only gonna go up from here. And uh, I just, I can't thank you enough for letting me be a part of, of the Cameo Famio. Are you kidding me? Like 3000 plus Nikki? Like I told you, you're on Mount Rushmore for Cameo. So thank you for everything. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you for, you. thank you for everything. Thank you for everything that uh, you do. And we love you. Uh, the whole team loves you. Oh, I and love you're, guys. You're, you're, you're a, you're a, thank you for having me. You know, I'm just really was excited to meet you. It's an honor. It's such a pleasure to meet you. I just, you know, I found the whole, I was sitting here reading your story and I was just like, I find it all so fascinating. You know what I mean? Just where this idea, how when you have a passion and you have an idea, you can, and you have drive, you can make anything happen. You know, some resilience. You kind of had to, well, run through walls is another value of Cameo. And sometimes you just have to will shit to existence. So 
Uh, I talk to a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs now and they ask, should I start a company? Should I not? I always say, if you have to ask me if you want to, if you should start a company, then you're not finding the, you know, like that that's the, that you shouldn't do it. Right? Like, yeah. like you think people should be like needing to hold you back, like to, to not start it because you want it so much. And, um, and I think you're such a great example for so many of like people following their dreams and their passions and, uh, and you know, I, I think it's the same if somebody had advice on, on their career and they came to you and they're like, well, I don't know if I should like audition for this or like, should I move to LA or should I like try to go to Broadway? Like, the only way you can get it is to, to fucking try, right? So it's like, go and go and do it. You my, my grandmother used to tell me, you don't know unless you try. And you have to. You have to put yourself out there. You have to be um, willing to fall down. And you have to be willing to fail and scrape your knees and get dirty. But you have to know that at the end, it's going to be so worth it. And it's not about how many times you get knocked down. It's maybe not even about how you get up. It's how many times you get up and how long you stay standing. And, you know, it's it's about the fight. It's all about the fight. And you have to wake up and every day and just, Muhammad Ali this shit. You know what I totally, mean? Totally, Come totally, on. totally, totally. Like we can all, you know, sting like a but you know, sting like a bee, float like a butterfly. We can all do it if we put our mind to it, you know? I love it. Well, I love Cameo, and I adore you, my friend. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I hope to be on a real beach like that someday, uh, maybe, you know. Hey, in the meantime, the Zoom Beach is where it's at. Exactly. Hold it down in Chi-Town for me. Thank you. Bye. There we go. Okay. Hi. Oh, gosh, how wonderful is he? You guys... The whole story about how Cameo got started just really, um, it just, it, it intrigued me so much. And I've been doing Cameos now for, I want to say almost two years. And in two years, like we said, over 3,000 Cameos. Um, I have had some of the most incredible experiences singing on there, wishing people, uh, like we said, being a part of their special days. Um, but honestly, it's just a great connection, a great tool, and there's so many incredible people on there. Um, so thank you, Stephen Galanis, and everybody, Arthur, and Annie, and who was it? Was it David? Everybody, you know, over at Cameo, who's been just so supportive and great. Thank you. You're all, you're all wonderful and just epic human beings, and I am just such a fan of you all. So you hush that with you loving me. I love you. Uh, anyway, you guys, thank you so much. Um, I'm really enjoying myself here. We have some incredible guests lined up. I am excited to announce that my 100th episode will be with the incredible Lainey Kazan. I'm very excited. The lineup is stellar, guys, for Nikki Knight. Um, you can also go over, grab this on iTunes. It's available, Spotify. I think so. Uh, it's also up on YouTube. This video, if you're watching this, then you are on YouTube. And we're also apparently in a windstorm. I hope you have a great day, everyone. Be well. Thanks for hanging in there with us while we hang out with you. I'm going to go get a hair tie and a diet peach apple, maybe. Oh, Lord. Till tomorrow, hang in there, cook something good tonight, um, and be well, guys. Thank you, Stephen. It was so fun. You're great. And I really wish that beach was real.